All right, guys, well, welcome back to the shop on this beautiful September morning. Uh, I'm not wearing my uniform today. My original plan was to put a video together about my 2001 uh, Beaver Patriot Thunder to thank everybody for 50,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel. But unfortunately, Doug Sewell with Sewell Motor Coach had a change of plans for me because uh, I'm going to go on a convoy back to Kentucky. Let me see if I can't give a quick synopsis of what's been going on. If you guys remember a few videos back, Cal picked up an Allegro and- Hi Cal, you have a safe trip. And he drove it all the way to Kentucky to Sewell Motor Coach over there in Harrodsburg, uh, Kentucky. He drove a 2011 Expedition back, I think if I remember correctly, back to the shop, dropped it off, and then I picked that up and relayed that over to California. Well, welcome to Colton, California. I just dropped off another one for Doug and did a walkthrough with the new owner of that coach and the owner of that coach traded in as 2000 and I think this is an eight. I'm sorry, that's a 2007 Fleetwood Expedition. So I drove this back, did an inspection on it for Doug, but in the meantime, he found this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red at a local auto dealer in North Scottsdale in the Phoenix area. He asked if I could go pick it up for, for him and bring it back to the shop, do an inspection on that one too. And sure, why not? It's a beautiful coach. It's actually a really beautiful coach, but we'll get to that too. Now, a number of my subscribers might recognize this 2007 Expedition. I did drive up to Sedona and I did an inspection on it for Doug a few years ago. I don't remember when it was. That owner actually traded that in for the newer Expedition. So that's been a, a almost a full circle going on right here. Doug was supposed to come out and pick these up uh, along with another driver, but then he ran an idea past me. What if rather than him coming out to pick them up, I just drive uh, one of them back and we get Cal and he drives the other one back since uh, I did an inspection on them anyways. And then I can continue my inspection on this Tiffin Allegro Ret on the trip. And then he'll just fly me and Cal back. And again, if you guys follow my channel, you know I'm kind of a sucker for a uh, road trip. I don't know about everybody else, but I have a difficult time saying no to a venture like this, so it's going to be fun to do. And more importantly, I have Doug's fuel card, so I don't even have to spend my own money this time. Now don't worry, we will put a video together about this one, probably a lot more. I do agree with everybody in my comments, I should be doing a lot more driving in this thing than I am otherwise, but I can't help but uh, point out the fact that if somebody's going to pay me and use their fuel to drive across country, kind of a no-brainer, right? So this is a pretty rare opportunity where Cal and I are gonna be almost doing a convoy together uh, in two coaches all the way back to Kentucky from Arizona. I will do my best to record as much as possible, but more importantly, I wanna show you guys this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red, because not only is it red, but, but it also has a lot of neat features that I don't even think Doug knew when he bought it, and I'd like to share it with you guys. So we will take a look at that. But first, I need to go pick up Cal. So what do you think? You ready to do this again? Oh yeah, we're ready to go, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if I remember correctly, it's about 1,800 miles, closer to 2,000 miles or so. And I was able to get that one topped off too. All right, Cal, you ready to go? We're ready. All right, take it easy. <laughs> see you in Kentucky. Too. I see you on the road. bad because uh, I'm going to be putting 2,000 miles on this and we're at 9,500 miles, not even 10,000 miles. So we're going to go over 10,000 on this trip. And don't worry, first chance I get, we're definitely going to take a look at this red. I like it. I don't like the shifter, but nobody asked me that. Here we go. The good news is she turns really easily because she's short. It's only a 33 foot coach. See us down the road somewhere. Okay, so I think I figured this out. I'm on trip two. Don't worry, I'm stopped. I select trip two. And it says push and hold okay to reset. All right, there's our mileage start point. Good morning, guys. I find myself in uh, Mississippi of all places. I was just helping out a friend 
who has an issue with their bus. But that's not what we're going to do today. It rained pretty good last night. It's a pretty a wonderful morning, especially when I consider where I just came from. But let's get on the roof of this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red and take a look at it. Now, of course, I do always like to use the factory ladder. That way I can test it out. And now a Tiffin is going to have a one-piece fiberglass roof. It is a true gel coat roof. What I have noticed lately, starting about 2017, 2018, I think Tiffin went a little bit thinner with the fiberglass matting on the gel coat roofs. So it's not too uncommon to see a little bit of warping or bubbling or looseness on the roof, especially uh, towards the edges. Especially if it's nice and hot. Now in some places on these roofs now that I'm talking about is a little bit thinner. You might step and you might feel it a little bit loose. Let me see here it popping. Now that's gonna be pretty normal on these. That's what I'm talking about. But all that means is that uh, if you get on a Tiffin roof and you still see a little bit of warping to it, that's not an uncommon thing. It's not delaminating. I just wanted you to be aware of it. It is still a true gel coat fiberglass roof. It is seamless, so there's no uh, seams on the edges, but it does wrap around to the side. The rear caps also went with uh, a little bit thinner, so definitely don't be standing on the rear cap or the front caps. They do tend to warp a little bit there too, and uh, I think it translates a little bit at that seam too. Now Tiffin uses a self-leveling silicone roof sealant, very durable, very long lasting, uh, but remember no other roof sealant is gonna stick to this other than self-leveling silicone. So on a Tiffin uh, from the factory, Self-leveling silicone is what you're going to be using. If you're doing a fresh install, you can use whatever sealant you want, but wherever it meets up with the factory sealant, it's not going to stick. But ultimately, it's still best just to use the same product on the entire roof all the way across. That way you don't confuse the next guy. But the ladder felt really good. This is a 2021. It's basically brand new. You may, the factory, when they paint it, they painted the sealant, and it is uh, what I was talking about. So that paint won't stick to it either <laughs> so it'll just crack off i don't know why they do that but let's go ahead and check and make sure the rear cap seam isn't loose i'm just going to walk on it look for any cracking in that paint because that'll be a dead giveaway if any screws are poking up out of it and i didn't see that might as well take a look at the rear clearance lights looking really good there no problems there there's uh, three slide outs on this RV. I have all three of them out right now so I can see the slide out toppers. Now these slide out toppers are from Gerard. It's got an acrylic fabric on it so it's a bit, a bit higher grade than you'd normally see on most manufacturers diesel pushers especially on entry level ones. That's a pretty interesting choice. Take a look at the side seam here. Now this sealant right here where it meets up is paintable because they seal it first and then they paint it. It's kind of hard to see that. Uh, we'll just be looking for any gaps or screws poking out. Got the Coleman Mach 8 roof ACs here. I'm just going to go ahead and brush up against it and make sure it's not loose. Have one of the sewer vents back here. Very nice. Now this is a kind of a siphon type of uh, Venturi sewer vent. So it's a little bit smaller inside there to create a little bit better vacuum to help move the uh, sewer gases out of the tank there. Look over the side here. I'm not expecting to really find anything wrong. This is a 2021 after all. If you do get up here, especially if it's raining and it's nice and wet like this, do take care, it is quite slippery up here. Tiffin did used to paint traction aisles down both sides of the roof it looks like they went ahead and discontinued that concept but like a lot of you guys point out it's kind of nerve-wracking when i'm up here i hate for anybody to slip and fall off their roof because there is no real safety here take a look at the skylight see it looks really good i don't see any signs of cracking this edge over here looks pretty good i did find a beetle just chilling out and enjoying life, apparently. Let's see if we can't get them to move on. <laughs> nope. Right over here, this is a the triple vision. This is an over-the-air TV antenna. It's a pretty good antenna. I do like it. There's no 
real aftermarket for it. But I do wish they were available aftermarket. We got the fantastic vent for the bathroom. Now they did put a max air cover on this one. And it looks like they installed it correctly so that there is a way for water to get out from underneath. So you definitely don't want to just screw these base down into the roof because that's a bad idea. Hey, there's my buddy. He was moving again. Okay. Got some more sewer vents here. Look like a pretty good installation. Right behind them is going to be this Jaboni. Now this is a solar pre-wire from Tiffin, but as we can see over there, they didn't use that. And Tiffin, I went ahead and had a Wi-Fi Ranger installed. So this will take a over-the-air Wi-Fi signal and rebroadcast it inside. That's a really nice uh, upgrade to have there too. But then on the Galley Fantastic Vent, they didn't put a Max Air Vent cover. We can so we can uh, inspect this one a lot better. Feeling looks really good right there, and the sealant you can feel it, it's very rubbery and gives. And if I try to scrape it with my fingernail, it doesn't tear. That's a very good indication that it's silicone. Look at this slide out topper over here. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, this brand new slide out topper and fabric is in good shape. Uh, the sealant over here, well, they went way above board. At that seam right there, so that's I do like to see that because that means that water's not going to get in between and just go down right on top of the slide out there from the gutter. Uh, now make our way forward carefully, not to slip on here. Let's we'll go to the front roof AC again. These are Mach 8s, they have an outside blower motor and an inside blower motor, the separate, so a little bit quieter. This is a low profile. So I do like these, they're a little bit easier to service, a little bit lighter, and it's not loose. So I was just checking to make sure it wasn't loose. If you go over here, we'll find the third slide-out topper, because this coach only does have three slide-outs on it. We'll find the third slide-out room topper. Got a little bit of sticks on there, but it looks pretty good. And my beetle's making his way around. He'll get there eventually. Not seeing any issues on here, unsurprisingly. It's almost like this thing is <laughs> brand new. So this is one of those items I wanted you guys to see. So I don't think Doug knew that it had 500 watts of solar on it when he bought it. This is a dealer installed option. So we have five uh, 100 watt flexible solar panels on here. Now these are just stick down ones. They didn't put any screws at the corners right there. So there's no, no holes or anything going through the roof that you have to worry about. They did add some self-leveling Dicor right here. It's not really a sealant to uh, do anything other than to keep air from getting underneath and to keep water from uh, creating a little bit of puddle under there because eventually you'll get enough dirt in there that stuff will start to grow if you live anywhere but Arizona. The dealer installed this and this is Go Power and they're 100 watt panels. They just use quick connect fittings everywhere. So I guess you could still add some more there if you wanted to but 500 is quite a lot of uh, solar in comparison to most solar installs where you get about 150 to 250. Right here will be the original factory installed satellite dish. This is a Weingard Road Trip T4 and here we go. Let's see an example. So this is self-leveling silicone and they just used a self-leveling acrylic sealant and I can just get underneath there and pull it back off. That's fine. They're just using it as glue anyways for all the cables. They didn't use any P-clamps, no screws. So again, very minimal uh, disturbance to the roof itself. So I do kind of like that. I have to be a little bit more careful right here because it's a little bit slippery up here. And I don't want to crush anybody's solar panels. So I won't be standing up to walk on the roof here. We'll take a look over there. Maybe a little bit of the sealant's cracking right there, but this is just a, you guys remember, when I rebuilt a red a few years ago, this is just a stick-on body molding. It's not structural, it's just decorative. I would still like to maybe get a little bit of sealant right there. We'll check and make sure that those screws right here on the molding, especially when it gets to the front cap, are a little bit more notorious for pulling out, but everything looks good there. 
not feeling too confident about getting much further than that to look down. The lights look really good. Looks really good there. Take a look at the windshield. It looks really good. My last thing just going to be to check the front cap. Same. Here, a little bit of indication. So it's got a little bit of give to it, but it's from the front from but it's from the front cap and from the roof itself. So the structure it is screwed down into the structure that's just the whole thing's moving a little bit. So that's a little bit of that warping I was talking about. Other than that, it's still in good shape. And this front cap, it's definitely a little bit thicker fiberglass in the rear cap, but still do not walk on that. Now, the only other issue that I guess I see up here is when the dealer installed the solar wiring, they went through the front cap right there. I did see the controller above the driver's seat. Uh, I mean... If it were me, I would have just preferred them just using a same wine guard cable entry port that uh, they, the factory used right here for the cables instead of just a, it looks like a piece of sheet metal bent around there. Mostly because I didn't see any leaks, it did rain, but because this is at an angle right there, uh, <laughs> that's a way for water to get underneath that front cap. Uh, if they would have used a cable entry plate, it wouldn't be a concern for mine. I might have still tilted it a little bit so that <laughs> water coming downhill isn't trying to go into the cable entry point itself. Now, other than that, again, we can see over here that sealant is just used as a, uh, a wind gasket, I guess, as a air dam I guess it didn't stick to the self-leveling silicone it's not vital and then this is the reason why having a seamless roof on the side is important it does puddle water so you can imagine if there was a seam all the way down there right there you could get water puddling up there and why on a lot of the high-end RVs have a bodywork front cap and rear cap into the roof itself so there's no seam at all in the front and rear caps now one thing I will point out is not only does this have Girard slide out toppers on it, but it has a Girard entry door awning and a Girard patio awning. It's also a really nice feature on that Girard patio awning and the entry door awning is they have the LED light strips on it. At night it looks really good. Not only does it make it very easy to see outside, but it really makes the coach look pretty cool too, along with the front end with those daytime running light uh, bars that they put on. Definitely an uncommon upgrade to see on a diesel pusher of this size and caliber. It's a really nice canopy you don't have, ever have to worry about hitting your head on and in the worst case scenario it becomes a pretty good garage if you want to park your car underneath it. And that's a really high-end upgrade that you wouldn't expect to find on competitors higher tier RVs let alone on the Tiffin Red. But that's pretty much it. The roof on this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red. So it's about 33 feet long so it's a shorter diesel. But uh, I know what you guys are thinking. Let's go inside, and I will go inside. I just have a few things to do in Mississippi, and then we'll check back in in Kentucky, I think. And just like that, we're at Auto Mart here in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. So let's get off this roof and take a look at the inside of this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red. It's got a lot of features that I think you guys will like. Now it's a little bit of a stormy September morning here in Kentucky so I'll try to be a little bit faster in case it does decide to rain but before we go inside I know I said we go inside first but the there's a few things on the outside I do want you to see especially one thing that was added by the previous owner now besides the paintwork that I do like on this one this is a fairly short diesel pusher so there's not a lot of basement storage because of it is propane right here is gonna be the main storage but again, they found a little bit of storage up on top right there. And then down underneath all the way across. So even with the short diesel, they did manage to put some good basement storage in here. I did like this feature. I've used it at least twice now. There's a Truma AquaGo tankless water heater. It's propane. We saw the propane over there. I've taken two showers in it now. Never once ran out of hot water and the water coming out has been extremely hot. I've actually had to mix it down so this is a really nice feature to have now here's that other side of that main storage compartment where you can go underneath or on top you'll find the inverter there the battery disconnects are right there and this is the important part 
this is why we're looking on here. The previous owner installed some Batterborn 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now this is four 12 volt batteries. You can see the charging voltage right there on there. And that is an incredible value. Uh, right there was probably the best selling point I could think about this entire RV. Now I did do a capacitance test, not a really scientific one. And most RVs always fail. If you leave the inverter on all night, usually we'll kill the batteries, but check this out. All right, thank you, uh, future James. So I have all the lights on inside right now. I go up here to the inverter. Turn the inverter on. All right, looks like we settled down at about 13 volts. So microwave's on, refrigerator's on. Showing 13 volts right there. Let's see what it's like in the morning with those batteries. I think they're gonna do pretty well. All right, well, good morning. I'm still in my pajamas. Slept in a little bit here. Let's look like we're at 13 volts. If I come over here, house 13 volts. Inverter's been on all night. The refrigerator's been running all night. Got some pizza to have in the morning. Alright, let's see with the inverter going. 12 point f <laughs> Look at that. It keeps popping back up again after the initial load. Those are good batteries. I feel like that might be good enough. Nice and warm. Uh, kind of water. With it back off, we're back up to 13 volts again. Those lithium batteries, those Battleborn lithium batteries, is a really good upgrade for this coach. Wow. That is an incredible upgrade the previous owner put on this. Well, that was the outside of the unit. Uh, I already touched base on the awnings, but I guess that's enough of the outside. Let's go ahead and go inside. Now, keep in mind, I've been living in this for two days now. I've been living comfortably for two days now, but Doug and his crew will clean it up. I try not to leave a huge mess, but, you know. Now, I think inside you're going to find all the incredible value that they've packed into this thing, even though the outside, what I showed, was incredible value. There are three slide outs on here, two in the front and then only one in the bedroom, which I thought was gonna cause an issue, but I actually found it to be pretty comfortable. Before we get too into the weeds about everything that's on here, I do wanna get the important stuff out of the way. The seats are in great condition, not having any problem with peeling on this one. I don't even think that any of it was used. The flooring is not ceramic or porcelain tile. It is just vinyl plank flooring. It is glued down, which honestly, it's a very durable, and more comfortable flooring on some level, and it's easier to repair. I'm not a big fan of the high gloss porcelain tiles that's been coming out in the last few years, so I do kind of like this, and especially animals will like it too because they won't slip and slide all the way around. <laughs> the other thing I did notice is all the cabinetry, both the doors and the cabinet frames themselves is solid wood. Now, I uh, am not an interior decorator. I thought this was just uh, unstained natural cherry wood, but I did find the original build sheet I'm going to just cover up some of the personal information right there, but they're calling it alder cabinet wood. thought that was kind of interesting. I didn't know that alder wood was being used. looks identical to cherry to my untrained eye, and I do kind of like the blonde natural look of it. But enough about that. Let's take a look at the driver's compartment because this is where you're going to find a lot of the value that I was even aware of. Now this does have a digital dash from Freightliner. Now, I thought digital dashes were more of a gimmicky thing, but it does seem like it's going to be the future. This has a smart wheel, but it has a new Freightliner smart wheel on it. So you have radio controls on the steering wheel, which I found useful. The uh, cruise controls over here, even the hands-free calling features. This one is for flashing the marker lights. And uh, of all the ones that I didn't think I was going to use that much, was going to be the menu and the OK buttons right there. So if you go to the middle of the gauges right there 
I can go to the home button. If I wanted to uh, see gauges, I can just hit OK right there. It comes up with whatever ones you want. Now if you say hit up and down to enter gauge setup, now I can change it gauges to whatever ones I want them to be. So driving down the road. I found this to be really useful. I push OK to save and exit. And so now those gauges will be set up in there. And then right next to it, there's a page button. I hit the page button. It'll kind of go through all sorts of different gauges for me. I found this to be really, really useful. Some other good value, it does have the built-in Kenwood radio and it does have Bluetooth connectivity. Cameras are gonna be right here and it does have rear view and side view cameras. And you can push that button right there to get a good view on the rear view. And if I hit turn signal, we'll come up with the turn signal. Now this does have a power day and night shade, just like uh, most of the reds you're gonna find. This is gonna be the privacy curtain, which again, driving down the road, especially driving east towards the sun on I-40 in the morning, it was really nice to have that as I was turning, driving straight into the sun. Probably the, one of the nicer features on here is the Freightliner air leveling system on here. So you have uh, a touch screen. If you want to go to leveling, just hit level right there. It has a, it's very similar to the valid system. And I just hit auto level right there. But even in this uh, driver right here, it's hard to see on camera, but it is sloped pretty well. You can see the back end is almost touching on the ground there. And then the front end is pretty high in the air. So traditionally, even with jacks on short uh, chassis wheelbases, it's pretty difficult to level but even these airbags worked out okay on a fairly unlevel ground. And then you can see we have all of our bubbles in that level, or level, so we're good. Now air leveling is traditionally only found on extreme luxury RVs and high, high-end buses, but uh, now these coaches have air leveling to it, which can be really nice because you just pull into a spot, hit the air level button, and you're level, no jacks coming down to get bent hung up or sink into the ground. So it's a pretty nice feature to have. The only real critique that I would have about this entire dash layout is this cup holder should have been right about there. It's very awkward to grab my cup right here. And there should be a little cubby right here. Just like over there. Should be on the side of the dash right there. But that's just me being difficult. Now I do feel like this video might be getting a little long. I think I've uh, shown most of the exceptional value parts. So we'll take a look through the inside right here. So I'll try to go through it a little bit faster now. But there's still so much good things to see. I'm sorry. But on the driver's side slide out, we're going to find this is a power reclining sofa. So it has a power button right there. And then the seat back itself is adjustable. And that was a very comfortable recliner. What I do like about this, not only the built-in cup holders there, but you can see right here, that's built-in USB charge points too. Tiffin did add a lot of USB charge points around the entire thing. Now next to the recliner, is the sofa itself. Now this is a nice comfortable sofa, still the same built-in armrest USB charger right there, but this does turn into a very comfortable bed and it's a little bit different than the previous ones. This one you'll have to take off the seat back, so you just Velcro on. Two seat back cushions out of the way. All you're gonna do is lift this up and pull out on it and it turns completely into a bed automatically. It's a pretty comfortable bed and there's no air bladder you have to air up or deflate each time you take it in and out, which is kind of a pain, especially because this is the main living room. Uh, but this is still a very comfortable bed already. And it goes in and out really quickly, which is really important if you are going to be using it as a bed on a short diesel where you need to get your living room back once everybody's done sleeping. Now next to the sofa, we're gonna find the electric fireplace. This is a space heater too, so in Arizona, just the heat coming off of that is more than enough in the Arizona desert. But it does have a sound bar, and the main TV is gonna be located right there. Sounds fantastic, it's a really good system. Now across from the driver's slide out will be the passenger slide out, which will have the dinette and the galley in it. Now this dinette is the standard, uh, it's kind of the industry standard dinette bench at this point. It does turn into a bed. You have a child's twin size bed right about there. And so that's two beds in the front area right here. And now this table itself is made out of solid surface Corian countertop material. The same stuff you're going to find in the galley countertop too. It has two sink covers, but only one very large stainless steel sink right there, which is nice again because you can put one sink cover on there. You still have a decent sized sink and a more countertop right here. Now, thankfully, in my opinion, that's just a manual shade right there at the galley. 
You don't have to worry about finding the switch, but this is a nice tiled backsplash right next to it. Nice Whirlpool convection oven microwave on top right here. Works really well. And a standard RV three burner propane stove top here. No oven down below. Now next to the stove, you'll find the refrigerator. Now they were upgraded to a LG refrigerator. No water and ice in this one, but it is free, but it is a refrigerator on top. And I really like these latches that they put in there much better than those Southco plastic latches, even though they did use that on the microwave door itself right there, but that's fine. That's fine. The freezer down below is a little bit different because it has pull out bins down below instead of a, a whole drawer that comes out, which again, I think I like that better. And they still managed to find, instead of having two pull out pantries you, with adjustable shelving down below and a nice adjustable pantry shelving there because not everything needs to be pulled out before we go to the bedroom or the bathroom i did point out this is the main tv there is no over the road tv because instead of that we have a bunk and i think that's a pretty nice feature too it's a manual bunk so you don't have to worry about motor controllers not working you don't have to get the chairs or anything out of the way uh, it's still not going to fall down unless you pull it down just flip it that way flip it down one more time and look at that. But it's a really decent sized bed, uh, but this is still gonna be a lot more comfortable bed than that dinette. And then of course, you don't have to worry about setting up your dinette table every single time it's time for bed. So that's three beds just in the front living room area and the short 33 foot diesel. And we haven't got to the bedroom. Now the hallway setup's not gonna be too different than most of your standard reds out there. It does have a Firefly touchscreen system on it. So you do have lighting, you can do all the lighting off and on. Very straightforward. Your monitor panel is going to be right there, and the bedroom slide control is going to be right here for the one bedroom slide. All right, as we push past here, I did just take a shower, so pay no attention to my wet towel. It's pretty much the same standard uh, corner shower that you're going to find on all the Allegro Reds, but it was very nice hot water, and I didn't have to worry about running out of hot water. Nice skylight in here, no skylight cover on here. You might want to make one for yourself, but this is again. A nice fiberglass surround. I guess I forgot to do my shower test, right? Go ahead and walk in. I don't know. That is close to a foot step up. I'm six foot, so if I step up into here, I'm not going to hit my head getting in, but getting out, I will hit my head. So I will have to step back down again. Inside, it's tight quarters, but it's very usable. I didn't have not have an issue. Uh, there is enough shower space, I guess. But still a very comfortable shower. And again, comparable manufacturers. That'll just be a plastic ABS shower surround that is all warpy and nasty. It does have a porcelain gravity toilet right here. It does have good spacing in between the shower and the countertop area right there. I didn't find it too uncomfortable. This is a laminate countertop here. And this is just a plastic sink. Otherwise, nice medicine cabinet, very decent size. And when you consider this is a short diesel, it's still a pretty good size uh, bathroom. I didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. Uh, and then of course past this solid wood door, we'll make it to the bedroom. Again, there's only one slide out in the bedroom, so it'll be the bedroom slide, but it is a king size bed. It is a memory foam bed. I did find it to be pretty comfortable. There is storage underneath the bed. Very common on a Tiffin. You can kind of see a lot of USB charging points. That one worked out perfectly. And they even give you nightstands on each side of the bed. You do have your Firefly one touch control from the bedroom so you can turn all the lights off from there too. Now I didn't point out in the front, but you do have both day and night roller shades and they are manual shades throughout the rest of the coach. The only power shades are gonna be on the dash as your visor and your power curtain. Cross in the bed, pretty standard Tiffin with the entertainment center in the bedroom area that will go the blu-ray player and the satellite receiver will go to all the tvs with hdmi splitter has a bedroom tv right above it same laminate countertop that you'll find in the bathroom pretty decent sized drawers uh and then the biggest uh, change from a normal red that you might see to this 33 foot one is that there's no slide out on this side which i don't really mind too much because it really only gives you a maybe a foot extra space and instead of uh having the washer dryer right there with a sliding door they put it in at an angle now this one does not have a washer and dryer but it is plumb for it 
and that's where the washer dryer would go and past here will be the closet now the closet does have the motion detector lights in it and i assume this is uh oh yeah look at that pillows but I think that's pretty much all the highlights of this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red 33 foot Class A diesel pusher that is a bunkhouse. There were a lot of features to go through and a lot that I didn't really show them to you. But it was fun to compare this 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red to that Tiffin Allegro Red that I rebuilt a few years ago and then drove across country. I think a lot of improvements for sure. But definitely the chassis area is a huge improvement. Pretty impressed with the features that they were able to cram into this short diesel Class A unit. And what the previous owner added to as far as value with the solar and the batteries. This is a really nice unit. And it drove really well. So it's easy to recommend this one. There was a 2021 Tiffin Allegro Red. Hey, I think I see Doug. So I'm working on this 2001 a Beautiful. Hey, there he is. This 2001 beautiful Liberty Coach. Okay. I'm doing pretty good. I was just taking everybody through that Tiffin Allegro Red that you let me drive all the way across country. Isn't quite the chariot. Cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool, that coach. Uh, now, I think you did tell me, because I know everybody's going to want to ask how much it costs, but you told me when I was in Phoenix before I told you about the solar and the batteries. $219,995. $219,95. Yep. Man. 220 220 that should represent a great value in the market so i think so too uh those batteries really held up quite a bit i did do a little test on them for you awesome. so you can see what that looks like I'm and then to see uh, that. now unfortunately when i got it it had less than ten thousand miles on it but i put about two thousand miles driving it from uh, mesa over to Harrisburg well, here. well some might say that that's a bad thing i would say that that's a good thing that... i just don't see i just don't see mileage below ten thousand very often so it it's, it hurts my heart a little bit but i guess 11,000 is still pretty low miles. Well, 11,000 is good miles, and, and honestly, the you putting about 20% of those miles on that coach really adds value to it. Well, I, I, I appreciate that, and not to mention it did go from Alabama to Mesa, so yep. it's really just almost done the same trip twice yep. now. Yep. That's about it. Now, how many solar panels were on the roof of that? There's five 100-watt go-power flexible. So solar. does that mean, you? I mean, without air conditioning, can, how long can you, do you think, I'm sure you probably covered this in some of the video, but I'm just curious myself now. With normal loads, with those LED lights, I don't think you ever, the batteries ever go dead. Wow. Even with the inverter on, keeping the refrigerator going. That's interesting. I may have to go out and use that one myself. But thanks a lot, Doug. Yep. Um, oh, the one other thing I was going to say. Drove all the way across country. No problems whatsoever. Drove really nicely. Wow. As a... Uh, Really enjoyed myself. Well, we it's always fun. We appreciate you bringing it. That means a lot to us. So if they do want to purchase that or are interested in it, uh... SewellMotorCoach.com. That's S-E-W-E-L-L -L MotorCoach.com. <laughs> All right. All right. I appreciate that, Doug. Uh, I'm not much of a salesman, like I always say, yeah, okay. but uh, people always ask me these questions, so let, it really let, helps that you give the, out the information. Let me do the selling, and you just do the inspect. Do what I'll, you I'll do the at. driving and the inspection. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching this one, guys. It was a little bit longer than I think I wanted it to be, but we did hit 50,000 subscribers while I was on the road. And so I wanted to just thank everybody again personally uh, for subscribing and enjoying these videos. And I'm very grateful for the trust and value you guys put on my videos. Uh, again, I said it on my last video. I do try to read every comment and I do try to respond to every email as fast as I can. But I, I, if, it, if I don't get to you in time, it's nothing personal. I generally am still putting in about 12, 14 hours a day working. And putting out videos does take some time too, let alone answering all those emails. But I do try to get to you. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. And uh, man, 50,000. Thank you. Would you guys believe it? The Phaeton that I picked up back in La Mesa RV in Phoenix, Arizona. It's already sold. The new owners, Dan and Veronica, are headed out to Indiana to enjoy themselves. I'm really glad I got a chance to meet them. We went 1,800 miles or so and got here at the exact same time, taking different paths. How'd it go, Cal? Hey! You made it! Did you have a good trip? Yeah. All right. I can't believe you break a windshield like that. Look where it is. <laughs> I don't know what it even was. Look at that. Uh, Cal took a Cal took a an Allegro Cal that It also helps because I still have Doug's 
dealer plate. It also it also helps Doug out a little bit because I have his dealer plate, his fuel card still from uh, all these other trips that's been going on. So, and don't worry, the first chance I get. Now these are Gerard slide out. Now these are Gerard slide out awning. Now these are. Uh, Tiffin used to put little traction bands all the way to the side. Tiffin did used to paint on like traction. Uh, Tiffin did used to. Uh, huh. Get some some geese there. This is just a. That's right. I love it. I just had a really nice shower this morning too. <laughs> And I am genuinely, and I am very genuine, and I am very genuine, and I am genuinely.